What is a padding oracle attack exactly? In one sentence, a padding oracle attack is an attack which uses the padding validation of an input message to decrypt the ciphertext. It allows an attacker to decrypt ciphertext and encrypt arbitrary data without knowledge of the key used for those operations. This can lead to leakage of sensible data or to privilege escalation vulnerabilities. The basis of padding oracle is CBC mode, which refers to cipher blockchaining. It is a fancy name with fancy flowchart explanations if you Google it. However, it's actually not that difficult. Let's forget about those fancy flowcharts and look into it. The first step of a CBC encryption is called padding. It refers to the process of filling a field with pad characters, which doesn't make any sense. There are many padding standards. Here, we'll be using PCKS5 padding standard. With this padding standard, the final block of plain text is padded with n bytes of value n, where n is the number of empty blocks. For example, if our plain text is CS453, and we want to use blocks of size A to store our message. Since there are five characters in CS453, there are three empty spaces left. Therefore, we pass three x03 bytes to fill in the blanks and make the size of our padded message to be a multiple of eight. If our message exceeds the block size like this, we simply move on to the next block and pad it with the same rule. Here we have 15 characters in computer security, so we will need to add a single x01 byte at the end of the message to pad it. What if the size of, a, of our plain text message is already a multiple of the block size? As in the third example, we have exactly eight characters that leaves no empty space in the first block. In this case, we have to follow the rule that at least one padding byte is always appended. Therefore, we'll need to pad eight bytes of x 8 into the message. Let's do a step-by-step -step encryption to understand CBC mode. To begin with, we have our plain text as Brian column 12 column 1 column. There are 11 characters in our plain text, so we will need to we'll need two blocks of size 8 to store our information. According to our padding formula, there are five empty blocks, so we pad the empty blocks with five x05s. Next, Recall the XOR computation, whose output is true only when inputs differ. We will generate a random initialization vector and XOR it with the padded plain text. We call the result of our XOR computation as the intermediary value. Next, we'll let the machine encrypt our intermediary value to generate the encrypted output. So far, we are done with the first block. And let's move on to the second one. Here, we don't, we don't need to generate a random initialization vector again. Instead, we'll be using the encrypted output of our first block and XOR it with the padded plain text of the sec second block to generate the intermediary value, and then encrypt it to have the ciphertext output. Make sure you understand how the encryption works, because this is the key to our exploit. Let's review it again. First, pad the plain text. Second, generate a random initialization vector. Third, XOR the padded plain text with the initialization vector to generate an intermediary value, and then let the machine to encrypt the intermediary value. Fourth, the ciphertext of the previous block is used as the key in the next block to be XORed with the padded plain text. Now let's think from the other direction. What will happen if we want to decrypt the ciphertext? Hmm, looks like we need to know the intermediary value to decipher the text. But how? Don't be disappointed. You are already very close to the answer. The best part of padding oracle attack is that the server will let you know if you are on the right track. More specifically, you will usually face a link that looks like this and you can modify the ciphertext in the brackets, and the server will respond to you differently under different conditions. There are three types of responses. 
The first is a 200 response, which indicates valid padding and valid data. The second is a 500 or 403 response, which in- indicates invalid padding. The third is a 404 response, which indicates valid padding and invalid data. If the padding is valid. Which will return either 200 or 404. Recall our definition of valid padding. That is, the message ends with n blocks of n. Therefore, now we know what the plain text looks like. So the de- decryption becomes very simple. We can just make brute enforcing guesses on the initialization vector, and see if the plain text is padded correctly accordingly. If it is. We can go back and calculate the intermediary value that was originally unknown to us. This might still sound vague to you, so let's perform a step-to-step attack. In the first step, we insert 16 bytes of zeros at the beginning of our input. This will isolate the first block by sending a value with a null initial value, and we receive a 500 error. Next, we increase the last byte of the initialization vector by one. And still receive a 500 error. We continue to increase the last byte of the initialization vector by one until we get something different. When the initialization vector is 3C, the response now is 200. We finally got a valid cipher text. Therefore, we found the last byte of the intermediary value in block one using the following XOR computation. Since we can now derive what the value of the last byte is, we can move on after the second last byte. Since we wish to generate a padding of 0202, the last byte of the initialization vector would be 3D XOR 02, which is 3F. For the second last byte, we will continue to do a brute forcing guess on it, starting from 00 and continuously increase it until the decrypted value reaches 0202. Here. When we try、uh, when we try two four, we get the desired padding. Thus, the second last byte of the intermediary value in block one is uh two four x four o two, which is two six. Then we continue in the same way until all bytes of the intermediary value of the first block is solved. Next, we will move on to the next block and solve its intermediary value in the same way as the first block. The only difference is that. Now we no longer use this initialization vector as the key, but uses the previous cipher text as the key. Since we now know the intermediary values of all my text, we can XOR the intermediary value with the key to get the ASCII code for our text. Decryption completed. I have a demo that shows the web server logs when exploiting a padding oracle attack. Our goal is to decrypt the secret data from the logs.
Okay, let's review padding oracle attacks by comparing it with some similar attacks. As I see it, padding oracle attack work in a similar way as blind SQL injection, which is to ask the database true or false questions and find the answer based on the application responses. Now, with padding oracle attacks, we don't ask the database, but send, but send testing requests and seek for different responses to decrypt the source. In other words, Padding Oracle attacks is similar to set channel attacks, which are attacks based on information gained by the implementation of a computer system, not the weakness in the implemented algorithm itself. So how can we prevent the Padding Oracle attack? The most common solution is to enable custom errors with response rewriting and create a single error page with all error types. Therefore, it will return the same status code and responses in all three cases. The key to this method is to hide what exact server error has occurred from the attacker. In this way, the attacker will have no idea whether their manipulated key is causing an error or if it is passing through successfully. Therefore, they would not be able to exploit the web page anymore.